Following the successful combat debut of the first Sturmgeschutz III assault guns, the German High Command, impressed with its performance, requested an increase in production. This would lead to the introduction of four additional series armed with the same short-barreled guns. Each of them introduced slight changes and modifications in order to further increase the vehicle's overall performance. Some of these changes were minor, or related to reductions of cost or production time, while others were implemented due to combat reports from the front. The Stug 3 would prove to be a highly successful vehicle and, in later years, would see its armament upgraded, further increasing its combat effectiveness. In October of 1938, the Waffenamt or Army Ordnance Bureau issued a production order for 280 Stug 3 vehicles, including 30 Ausf A and 250 Ausf B versions. The Ausf A vehicles saw service during the German invasion of France and the Low Countries of 1940. Despite the small number of deployed vehicles, their performance was deemed a success and army officials demanded the increase of the production numbers of the newer version. As a result, the order for the Ausf B was increased by 50 more vehicles. While visually quite similar, the Ausf B version incorporated several changes compared to the Ausf A, including wider tracks, a new front drive sprocket and a simpler transmission. The wider tracks improved the vehicle's mobility and reduced the ground pressure, allowing it to traverse softer terrain. The simpler transmission was easier to manufacture and maintain, and less prone to breaking down. Unfortunately, the early Stug 3s had a large weak spot on their frontal superstructure, specifically the left aperture that was used by the gunner's sight. In order to rectify this, the opening was simply enclosed, and the gunner was instead provided with a longer periscope sight that would be used from inside the vehicle. The original two top hatches for the gunner's sight were replaced with one larger opening. These changes were implemented starting from the Ausf C version. In addition, the front upper armour plate design was greatly simplified, as the previous version used a somewhat unnecessarily complicated design. The Ausf C introduced a much simpler arrangement with fewer angled plates. This improved the whole design, providing better protection and greatly simplifying the production of the superstructure. Parallel to the development of the Ausf C, the German army requested that additional vehicles be built to increase the combat strength of available units and acting as replacement for lost vehicles. This version, named the Ausf D, was basically a direct copy of the Ausf C. By September of 1941, 150 vehicles of this version would be built. However, in order to improve the level of protection without adding extra weight, the frontal armour plates of the Ausf D were face hardened to a greater degree. By increasing the face hardening of the frontal armour plates, the Stug 3 Ausf D was better able to withstand enemy fire without adding significant weight or reducing its mobility. This made it a more effective combat vehicle and helped to increase the combat strength of available units. The last of the short barrel series would be the Ausf E. The previous versions mainly introduced modifications aimed to improve the overall design and combat effectiveness. One of the problems noted with the Stug 3 was the lack of a command vehicle with specialised radio equipment. While the existing Stug 3s were equipped with radio receivers, they could not store additional equipment needed for a unit commander. The Stug 3s had limited interior space and modifications were needed to accommodate additional radio equipment. This involved increasing the sides of the superstructure panniers, which provided additional space for the radio equipment. For Stug 3 Ausf E's that were allocated as replacement vehicles without the extra radio equipment, the additional free space would be used to store more ammunition rounds. The Ausf E was also the first version to receive a machine gun. This provided the Stug 3 Ausf E with a degree of protection against enemy infantry, since the vehicle lacked a turret and could not quickly respond to threats from different directions. Initially, a production order of 500 Ausf E's was given, and assembly began in September of 1941. After some 284 vehicles were built, 
Further production was cancelled in February of 1942. Priority was instead given to the longer barrel equipped on the Ausf F. In the early years of the Second World War, due to the limited German industrial capability, the production of new Stug 3s was quite slow. Thus, the first unit type formed was the six-vehicle strong Sturm Artillery Battery, or Assault Gun Battery. These were divided into three Zuge platoons, each equipped with only two vehicles. In time, as more Stug 3s became available, this unit strength was increased to the Abteilungen battalion level of 18 vehicles. These battalions were divided into three batteries, each six vehicles strong. Once the Ausf E entered service, the strength of the battalion would be increased by three commanding vehicles. Following the completion of the Western Campaign, the Stug III would see service during the Axis invasion of the Balkans. The war in this area was initiated by the Italians during their failed invasion of Greece, and following the deterioration of their military situation, they begged their German allies for help. Counting on its Balkan allies and the neutrality of Yugoslavia, the German army prepared for an invasion of Greece. But the whole situation was greatly complicated by the overthrowing of the Yugoslavian government on the 27th of March 1941 by pro-allied military officers. Hitler was naturally furious with this development and immediately ordered the Yugoslavian invasion commence. For the upcoming Balkan campaign, only four assault gun battalions were available. These were the 184th and 197th, which were allocated to the 2nd Army, and the 190th and 191st allocated to the 12th Army. The 184th and 197th participated in the attack on Yugoslavia. Given the rapid collapse of the Yugoslavian army, their combat use was likely limited. Nevertheless, at least two Stug 3s were reported lost in Yugoslavia. The other two assault gun batteries were stationed in Bulgaria, and from there, they would cross the border to Greece and proceed to attack the Metaxas Line. Unfortunately, similar to the French campaign, their combat use in this operation was poorly documented by the Germans, and much remains a mystery. For the invasion of the Soviet Union in 1941, the Germans managed to form 12 assault gun battalions and 5 additional batteries. These were divided into the three Heeresgruppen, or army groups Nord, Mitte, and Sud. It was expected that the main effort was to be carried out by Army Group Center, and eight assault battalions were allocated to this part of the front. Army Group North received five batteries supported by two battalions. The remaining units were all allocated to the Army Group South. In the early stages of the war with the Soviets, the Stug 3 vehicles achieved great success. For example, the commander of an unspecified unit, Rudolf Jeneke, is credited with having destroyed some 12 Soviet BT-2 tanks. Another successful commander was Oberleutnant Peter Franz, whose unit took part in the heavy fighting for Tula in December 1941. His unit managed to destroy some 15 Soviet tanks in a single day of fighting. The 667th Battery particularly performed very well during the battle for the approaches to Leningrad. During the advance towards their targets, this battery saw heavy action while supporting an infantry formation from the 1st Corps, thanks to the efforts of the 667th Battery and its commander, Oberleutnant Joachim Luitzau reported enemy losses during the period from the 12th to the 19th of September 1941 included some 225 bunkers destroyed, along with 301 heavy weapons and machine gun nests. In addition, 6,500 enemy soldiers were taken captive, with 92 guns being captured. For his effort, Joachim Lutzau was awarded the Knight's Cross Medal, Kurt Kirchner, who, in early 1942, was credited with destroying 30 Soviet tanks, was also part of this unit. Regardless of the success made by the units operating the Stugs 3s, the heavy Soviet resistance meant that losses began to rise. For example, in the case of the 184th Battalion, of its original 21 vehicles, 16 were operational by the 20th of August 1941. Two Stug 3s were completely destroyed and had to be replaced. 
During the German advance, the Stug III was often used as an improvised anti-tank vehicle, despite not being designed for such a role. The experience gained during the first year of the war in the East showed the general ineffectiveness of German tank and anti-tank guns, including the short 7.5cm gun used by the Stug III's. While primarily designed to engage fortified positions using a high explosive round, this gun was still capable of piercing some 39mm of armour at 500 meters. This was more than enough to deal with the T-26 and the BT series, but against the new Soviet designs such as the T-34 or the KV series, these rounds were almost completely ineffective. During firing trials carried out on the Eastern Front in September of 1941, it was found that the T-34's front armour could not be penetrated when using the standard armour-piercing rounds for the short 75mm gun. In rare unlucky cases, the turret's front armour was penetrated, but the side and rear armour were immune to even the armour-piercing rounds. The only vulnerable spot was the lower hull side, which could be easily penetrated. Surprisingly enough, the high explosive round was the most effective. While it could not penetrate the thick armour of the enemy tank, its explosive firepower was enough to cause serious damage by blowing up the suspension or even jamming the gun. Despite this, the Stug III was capable of destroying a T-34, albeit at close range and with the luck and skill of its crew. For example, vehicles from the 201st Battalion managed to destroy a number of T-34s at close range in October of 1941. By this point, due to the ineffectiveness of their tank and anti-tank guns, the Germans were becoming desperate to find a solution. The introduction of tungsten-based ammunition was seen as a potential answer. The downside of it was that Germany was in very short supply of this material. Due to the 7.5cm L-24's low velocity, the Germans never developed a tungsten round for this gun. Instead, they approached the problem from another angle. In 1941, Adolf Hitler issued an order for the production of shaped charge rounds to begin as soon as possible. Such rounds had a velocity of 450 meters per second and were able to penetrate 75 millimeters of armor regardless of the range. While on paper this meant that any enemy tank currently fielded by the Soviets could be defeated in this manner, reality was very different. For example, the low velocity led to extremely limited accuracy. In addition, the overall ballistic design of the round was far from perfect, and it often simply bounced off or failed to penetrate at all. Interestingly enough, following the introduction of this new ammunition, the production of standard armor-piercing ammunition was discontinued at the end of 1942. The second year in the East brought with it a new but much smaller German offensive towards the city of Stalingrad and the resource-rich Caucasus. But before that, they had to subdue Crimea, where the Soviets had launched their own attacks. Given the extensive Soviet threat to the German operations in Crimea, General Oberst von Manstein launched his own offensive, named Trappenjagd. The main spearhead of this operation consisted of the newly arrived 22nd Panzer Division, supported by the 197th Battalion equipped with Stug 3s. The attack would prove to be highly successful, and the Stug 3s distinguished themselves in combat. They provided the necessary infantry support, but, yet again, due to the lack of effective infantry anti-tank guns, the Stug was used in anti-tank roles. The German operation lasted from the 8th to the 20th of May 1942. During that time, the 22nd Panzer Division and the 197th Battalion managed to destroy 250 Soviet tanks with the loss of only three Stug 3s and eight Panzers. The 245th Battalion, equipped with some Stug 3 Ausfies, was sent to the Eastern Front to participate in the German drive towards the Caucasus in June of 1942. It participated in heavy fighting north of Stalingrad at the end of 1942, and it still had a number of Stug 3 Ausfies during 1943. In the later years of the war, the number of short-barreled Stug 3s dwindled due to losses and were relocated to the Sturmgeschutz Ursatz und Ausbildung Abteilung. In this role, they would be used up to the end of the war. Others would see continued frontline action simply because there was nothing else available. For example, some vehicles were used to suppress the Warsaw and Czechoslovak uprisings late in the war. 
Somewhat surprisingly, the Stug 3 was quite a rare sight in North Africa. Three Ausfdis, part of the Zondarverband 288, were sent to this front in early 1942. These Stug 3s saw action during the Battle of Gazala and the Axis capture of Tobruk. At least one was captured by the Allies near Bir Hakeim in May of 1942. Only one Stug 3 was reported operational by August of 1942. Vehicles that were used in North Africa and other warmer climates, such as southern Russia, received additional changes to the engine compartment in order to effectively operate in this challenging theatre. This included cutting ventilation ports on the top hatches of the engine compartment and increasing the engine ventilation speed. This concludes our look at the short barrel Stug 3 vehicles. What do you think of these vehicles? What improvements should they have received besides the later longer gun? Let us know in the comments. If you haven't already, consider becoming a subscriber so you don't miss a single video. If you want to contribute more directly, consider donating on Patreon or PayPal. The money comes back to you in the form of bigger and better videos. As always, keep us in your sights.